It is Thursday, September 16th, 1920. Olympic Games in Antwerp, Belgium were just closed four days ago and U.S. airmail begun its service last week. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. J.P. Morgan lets first people to go into the bank. We are about to be witnesses of event that will directly change life of more than 500 people and indirectly change life of everybody in the entire nation. Galileists are about to strike. Wall Street bombing of 1920. Horse-drawn wagon with 100 pounds of dynamite passed by lunchtime crowds stopped across the street from the headquarters of the J.P. Morgan Bank on the financial district's busiest corner. Minutes later, a huge explosion shakes the home of the New York Stock Exchange in Lower Manhattan. The bomb caused more than $2 million in property damage, $23 million inflation, and destroyed most of the interior spaces of the Morgan Building. 38 families just lost one of their loved members, most of whom died within moments of the blast. 143 people were seriously injured, and about 400 people had to be transported to the hospital. This is the deadliest act of terrorism on U.S. soil up to this point since bombing of the Los Angeles Times building in 1910. None of the victims turned out to be the driver of the wagon. Official sources distinguished revenge for arrest of Sacco and Vanzetti, two anarchists who were convicted of murdering two men during armed robbery in South Braintree, Massachusetts, as a very possible motive of the bombing. Authorities believe that their fellows Galeanists and anarchists in the U.S. could have begun a campaign of violent retaliation. Soviets and communists were also evaluated as possible masterminds of the Wall Street bombing. The Bureau of Investigation and local police investigated the case for over three years without success. Who was later blamed in particular was Mario Buda, an associate of Sacco and Vanzetti, and the owner of a car which led to the arrest of the latter for a separate robbery and murder, who is alleged by some historians to be the man most likely to have planted the bomb. Budo was well experienced in the use of dynamite and other explosives and was known to use sash weights as shrapnel in his time bombs. He was believed to have constructed several of the largest package bombs for the Galeanists. Buddha was in New York City at the time of the bombing, but he was neither arrested nor questioned by police. Very shortly after the bombing, Buddha left the United States and promptly sailed for Naples. By November, he was back in his native Italy and never returned to the United States.